Uh, hello students. Uh, so welcome to this lecture on um, uh, trying to learn how to optimize the number of stages for a given circuit so that uh, we get the minimum delay. Uh, so it's kind of an empty slide here. So I'm going to draw an inverter. Um, and let's start, let's begin with uh, well, one inverter here. All right, so uh, the, the inverter has an input size, uh, let me take, you know, input size of one. What it means is uh, at the input uh, of this particular inverter, uh, it sees a capacitance of one, uh, one C, including both the PMOS and then the NMOS transistors. Ideally, it is uh, quite not possible to have, uh, you know, the PMOS as uh, 0.66 C uh, for the PMOS, you know, two by three parts will go to the uh, PMOS uh, and then uh, uh, one by three parts will go to the NMOS. So 0.33 C for the NMOS. So it is not quite possible, uh, but just for it, our theoretical understanding, uh, we will take a size of the gate size of one for this inverter. And uh, let's say that uh, this sees a load capacitance, some kind of a load capacitance. Okay. So the minimum delay in this case, of course, uh, you know, there, there is uh, nothing here. Uh, so the delay here for one stage uh, will be nothing but PI plus, uh, you know, PI plus GI into HI. So it will be P1 plus, you know, it is this, instead of I, it should be one here because there's only one stage. Uh, there's only one stage here. So it will be plus G1, uh, G1, H1. So it will be nothing but, uh, you know, the, the parasitic is one, the, the logical effort is nothing but one, and then H1 is nothing but what we see is a C load, uh, you know, uh, divided by one. So it will be nothing but one plus uh, C load. Eventually, uh, the, uh, the delay will be nothing but uh, uh, one plus C load. Because the sizes are already given uh, as one, uh, so there is no, you know, the delay will always be one plus C load. Now, now let's take another example of having uh, two sizes or uh, two inverters. The first stage is one, the second stage, uh, let's say it is X. And then they, we have the C load here. Now the delay should be delay for two stages. And then I'm talking about, you know, it is a two stage uh, delay. And I'm talking about the minimum delay. So I'm going to write it as MIN will turn out to be, uh, you know, the summation of the parasitic, which is nothing but one plus one will be two for the two inverters in, uh, you know, uh, in each of the stages plus uh, the two stages F raised to one by N, right? So F raised to one by two. Right, so this is uh, the two stages. So what I mean uh, meant is each of the stages F1 and then the F2, which is nothing but the stage efforts, it sees an equal stage effort. And that's the, that's the reason why I have uh, taken twice into the same stage effort, which will be F raised to or one by two. Now let's say I have three inverters, right? So in this particular third case, I have now three inverters, so I have uh, three inverters and then I have the C load. So I'm talking about the same C load everywhere, same C load. And I'm talking about uh, the same, uh, you know, the first stage having the same gate size. So here also it is one. And, uh, you know, let's say the size is X now, the size is Y now for the second and third stage respectively. So now the delay for the three stage and the minimum delay is nothing but uh, the parasitic is has increased now to three instead of two or instead of one in the earlier case plus three stages and F the overall path effort raised to one by three. Okay. So if I get started, the parasitics of one for one stage, the parasitic of two for the second stage, the parasitic for the three for the third stage is increasing. So the parasitic's value is increasing. 
But if I consider this f raised to 1 by 2 and f raised to 1 by 3, so this particular value, right? And then, and then the f value is nothing but uh, the product of all gi hi turns out to be c load by 1, right? So this f raised to 1 by 2, f raised to 1 by 3, so this particular value has decreased. But the number of stages, this is going to increase. So I'm going to use a different pointer so that it becomes very clear for you to see. So two has increased, three has increased. Uh, no, from two to three, it has increased. But the f raised to one by two and, and then f raised to one by three, it has decreased. And the parasitics has increased, right? For starting from the first stage, second stage and third stage. So there clearly is some minimum point in the delay for the number of stages here. So it's not necessary that if I keep on adding the inverters, the delay is going to increase, right? So because of this f raised to one by n factor, there may be the number of stages, there may be an optimum number of stages where the delay will be less. So hope, you know, this is, uh, you know, the, the number of stages uh, doesn't necessarily cause in the delay. Uh, so hope that is clear. So let's take an example here. So we need to optimize the number of stages uh, and what should be the number of inverters to be added to get to the minimum delay. So the first stage is anyways one. So the same example what we had seen in the earlier slide and then uh, we have the 64. What it means is it is actually 64C where one C represents the unit NMOS uh, transistors uh, capacitance. Right? So it's parasitic capacitance or the input capacitance, all are considered to be 1C. So a width of 100 nanometers is, uh, is considered as having a 1C capacitance. So how many number of inverters I need to add here? Uh, and then once we add the number of inverters, once we identify the number of inverters that needs to be added here, so that I'll get the minimum delay. And then we will try to identify what should be its gate size. Right, so the delay as such, if I want to find out the minimum delay, so this should be the minimum delay, is nothing but the summation of all the parasitics. So if I add two inverters or three inverters of n number of inverters here in this particular block, then this parasitics will be nothing but n plus one. So because one is the, the first stage uh, inverter, um, so considering this, considering this to be an n stage inverter, so the parasitics will be nothing but n. And uh, you know, this one is nothing but each of these stages will see the stage effort of fi, uh, f2, f3, f4 up till fn. And each one of this stage effort should be equal. So I'm going to do n into the individual f's right uh, the individual f's could be f1 or f2 or fn which is equal to nothing but uh, the total path effort raised to 1 by n if the all the number of stages is n then i'll be able to find out the path effort and then uh, 1 by nth root of that path effort will give me the individual stage efforts the individual best stage efforts and that is what i'm going to put it here for finding out the minimum delay so that's what we get here. The individual, you know, the best stage efforts, which is arriving from the path effort. So the path effort is, you know, if I want to calculate the path effort, which is nothing but, which we have seen earlier for all the stages, uh, the product of GI HI. GI for the inverter is always one. So it is always one here, GI and then the HI. So if I have, uh, you know, if I have a lot of inverters here of the different sizes, X, Y, and Z, all those X, Y, and Z in this particular H and the product of HI will get canceled. And what remains is only 64 divided by one. So my F value turns out to be 64, right? That's what I have, you know, uh, considered here or evaluated here, which is going here in 64 raised to one by N. I hope this expression is clear to everyone. Moving forward. So now I have the minimum delay expression with the number of stages, with the number of stages n is n plus n multiplied by 64 raised to 1 by n. 
And if I put a table here, if n is equal to 1, what is the delay? If n is equal to 2, what is the delay? If n is equal to 3, what is the delay? And so on. Turns out that for n is equal to 1, it is 65. For n is equal to 2, it is 18. And these values are, you know, taken clearly from this particular expression. And if n is equal to 3, the minimum delay turns out to be 15, which is very, very less compared to 65. And if n is equal to 4, uh, I will get 15.31. If n is equal to 5, I'll get 16.48 and then so on. So if I draw this particular graph of delay versus number of stages, what we are seeing is for starting from the one stage, going towards moving towards the higher number of stages, somewhere in the three value or between three and four value, it is going to reach the minimum, uh, minimum delay and then it starts from a higher value, goes to the minimum uh, value, and then it starts increasing. Although I have not represented, you know, I have not uh, got the data points for the uh, higher number of stages, but it is likely to increase the delay if it is beyond, you know, the stage number four. Beyond the four stages, it is likely to increase. So we get an optimum point somewhere between three and four. Uh, which will give me the minimum delay. So similar to how we identify the optimum X and Y value, optimum gate sizes, the number of stages could also be optimized to get uh, or to achieve the minimum delay. Right, hope this is clear. We have an expression for the minimum delay with respect to the N value where N is the number of stages. So if I want to find out the minimum delay, uh, thus the derivative of the delay with respect to n should be zero so that I'll get the optimum n value. And if I do the differentiation of this, this particular expression n plus n raised n multiplied by f raised to one by n is n equated to zero, uh, I will get, you know, uh, derivative of n with respect to n is one. And this is the product, you know, so the derivative of this product n and f raised to 1 by n, where n is a function of n and f raised to 1 by n is a function of n. So I, I'll do a partial uh, derivative, which will be, uh, you know, take f raised to 1 by n, uh, uh, and the derivative of n is 1. And uh, then I will do a derivative of f raised to 1 by n multiplied by n. So it will be n f raised to 1 by n. The derivative of f raised to 1 by n will be nothing but, uh, uh, f raised to 1 by n log of f and then the derivative of 1 by n which will be 1 mi uh, minus of 1 by n square. So this n and this one, one particular n will get cancelled. So finally we will have this particular expression 1 plus f raised to 1 by n minus 1 by n f raised to 1 by n log of f. So if I consider f raised to 1 by n uh, you know as, as, uh, as a common factor so it will be nothing but 1 plus I will have f raised to 1 by n, 1 minus log of f raised to 1 by n is equal to 0. I can find a solution of f raised to uh, 1 by n, right, by a heuristic method. Heuristic method means if I keep on plugging the, the values for this f raised to 1 by n, uh, and then I should be able to find this, uh, a, a closer value which is going, going to give me for this particular expression, it is going to give me zero. Right, so what I'm going to do is uh, from this particular expression, one plus f raised to one by n. So I'm going to write it as one plus uh, rho f raised to one by n is to considered as rho, another variable one minus log of rho is equal to zero. So I'm going to keep putting the values of rho starting from let's say zero or one or two or three or four and somewhere between three and four, I should be able to find uh, 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 somewhere between three and four, I should be able to find, you know, it is going, it's uh, the expression is going to result into a zero value and keep on, you know, keep on putting the values between three and four, I should be able to find f raised to one by n or rho value turning out to be 3.8. 591, which is nothing but f raised to 1 by n. So if that is the value, I know what is the f value. f is equal to nothing but 64. f we had calculated earlier was 64. So 64 raised to 1 by n turns out to be 3.591. So the 
you know, the optimum number of stages n value turns out to be 3.253. So the optimum number of stages is 3.253. Theoretically, it is 3.253. You know, but when you are putting the number of stages or number of inverters, it either has to be an integer value. You know, it either has to be a three value or a four value. So it cannot be 3.253 stages, right? So we calculate what is the delay if I have three stages and what is the delay uh, on the other side if I have four stages. Turns out that the delay for the three stages is, you know, is lower than the delay for the four stages. We will use the three stage inverters, right? So as to achieve the minimum delay. So 64 raised to one by three, three stages will give me FI of four, right? So the overall delay will be nothing but the three stage parasitics will be nothing but three for because each of the individual stages uh, is made up of inverter and inverter is gives a parasitic of one. So one plus one plus one will give me three plus the three stages into uh, 64 raised to one by three, which will be nothing but four. So finally, we are getting the minimum delay as 15 is what we you know we had seen in the last slide. So finally, this is what the circuit will look like. I have uh, the first stage, I have the second stage, I have the third stage. So three stage circuit is going to give me a minimum delay of 15 and minimum normalized delay of 15 for a load capacitance of 64C and then the input gate size of one. So if I want to find out what is the gate size of X and Y here, right? I know the FI value here is nothing but, you know, 64 raised to one by three turns out, you know, which is nothing but four here. So the individual GI HI, if I can equate it to four, I should be able to find out the gate sizes Y and X. So if I do G3 H3 is equal to four, I should be able to find out what is Y because G3 for this particular third stage is one. H3 is nothing but 64 divided by Y, which is, uh, so Y turns out to be 16. Similarly, if I do for the second stage, GI HI is equal to four, I should be able to find out, uh, you know, for the second stage, GI is one, H2 is uh, nothing but uh, Y by X, which will be four, and so X will be uh, the value of four. For, you know, Y is taken consider, you know, once we find out the 16 value as Y, we can put it here and then find out uh, the X as nothing but four. So my transistor sizing for this uh, inverter, you know, uh, for this particular inverter will be nothing but two by three for by multiplied by sixteen, and then one by three multiplied by sixteen, and similarly here, the transistor sizing for the second stage inverter is nothing but two by three of four multiplied by four and uh, one by three multiplied by four. Right, so this is how my circuit will look like in the output uh, where the output is 64C and at the input side, um, so I have uh, the inverter which is having uh, two by three and then one by three. So this gets connected to the input here. So this is my, uh, you know, the gate level circuit and then this is my transistor level circuit design, right? With the widths of the transistor uh, mentioned, which is going to give me a minimum delay, right? So one more point to note here is I've used three number of stages, right? So in this case, uh, my input and then my output here, it will be inverted. So my output here will be inverted. So my output here, because it is three stage, so the output here will be nothing but inverted input, right? But if there is a specification that, you know, we, we need to get, uh, we, we need to get not an inverted uh, output. So, so in that case, if Y has to be same as that of the input, in that case, I will choose the you know, I will choose even number of stages, right? So in that case, n is equal to three may not be an appropriate design because my output will be violated because the output is nothing but 
a complement of the input is what we are getting. But if my output needs to be equal to that of you know, the logical expression need not to be a complement expression, then in that case, I will try to choose the even number of inverters. And it turns out that n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 4. I will choose n is equal to 4 because the delay of n is equal to 4 turns out to be very, very close to the, uh, to the minimum delay. Right, so in that case, I will choose n is equal to 4 and recalculate the sizes of x, y, and maybe the z because that will be the fourth inverter and then re, uh, uh, redefine or uh, re-evaluate the widths of this individual transistors. Mm -hmm.